Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is the finale of my Resident Evil Zero S rank hard difficulty, no healing walkthrough. This is the final boss, Marcus, or the Leech Queen, depending on how you want to call it. This is phase one of a three phase boss fight. This is probably the most physically demanding on the player because to do what I'm doing here, I'm going to be using both analogs to control my team. Uh, there are other ways of doing this guys, you can set your team partner to solo and the computer can be very good uh, actually dodging the boss. They they look like they're absolutely insane. They'll stand bang next to it until it starts to move and then they'll counter move. And they almost do it perfectly. And I say almost because they can still get injured and that's the reason why I didn't do it. But if you're in a casual run and you're, you can't control both people and you're getting killed because your partner's fucking up, put him on solo. Take a weapon off him, put him on solo, and he will dodge, or she will dodge, depending on who you control here, way better than you think they will. Like, when they're together with you, you'll notice that they stand still all the time like idiots. And especially if you use the analogs to move both of the characters like I'm doing now, what happens is the moment you stop using the analog to move the character, they'll stand still before it, the programming takes over, and it can be a pain in the dick. And the big issue here is blocking your path. The AI will always try to get back up your ass because they're some kind of sodomite maniac and when they do that they can put themselves in where you want to run. So what I'm doing here guys is, is whenever you see me stop to put a few shots into the queen I'm pushing the other analog to move the guy out of the way and towards where we're about to go and what I'll do is, is I'll let go of the analog as I'm shooting and he'll start coming back and I'll push him back that way. And I'm doing this all the time to make sure that he isn't getting caught on things because that's the analog that I have the less clarity for. Like you see it then? Started running back towards me so I pushed it away. And the trick here is to get in a comfortable rhythm where you control the position of the boss. If you move through this room too quickly, the boss will cut through the middle and it'll fuck you up. You need to do this at quite a methodical pace. You also need to be aware that the boss has incredible range if it whips you, and it has a grab that it'll kind of skate towards you in some crazy Vanquish-esque uh, bullshit, and then grab you. And then when you're in that grab, I don't know if it counts as damage, but I count it as damage. It gives you a great opportunity to do big damage to the boss, but it's also a grab, so I, I was resetting if that happened. But what is the main difficulty here? If you're using the pistol like I am and it doesn't have the upgrade on it, you're going to be doing 5 damage to this boss. This boss has, I think it's 500 life, so 100 pistol bullets is going to kill this boss. That's how long this is going to take. If you miss, or if you shoot from an extended distance, it's going to take longer. If you upgraded the handgun though with the custom parts, you're going to do more damage to this dude and it's going to really uh, expedite this process. The real tricky part here is the camera. Understanding the camera here will come through playing. You're not going to get it your first attempt because the camera is going to fuck you, it's going to fuck your controls, it's going to make things weird. The second thing is controlling two people at the same time is dead awkward. And then the third thing is just the variable of luck. Sometimes you can get unlucky, sometimes you'll get caught, sometimes you'll not take a turn right and you'll get caught. It's just one of those things. If you've come here and you have ridiculous amounts of ammo, I'm talking you are stacked, then feel free to do this with a different weapon. Hit it with the magnum, hit it with the shotgun, hit it with the grenades. But I, I really didn't have faith that I had enough ammunition for the next room. So all this is, is a safe strategy to make sure that I'm taking in the most amount of ammunition I physically can. And, and it worked for me, and hopefully it'll work for you guys. But this is, this really reminded me of Brothers, is it Two Souls I think it's called, something like that. I can't remember the name of the subtitle. But it was the game by Starbreeze where you played those two brothers that were tied to each other and you controlled them both with the separate analogs at the same time. And at first it, it kind of really affected your brain and then after a while you did get used to it. It's, it's kind of like that and, and a little bit of Super Monkey Ball. <laughs> I don't know why it reminds me of that but it does. So when you're doing this there are times when it feels like you get good at it and then there are other times where your brain just feels like it's not working. But it can be done. And that's literally what you're going to be watching for the next five minutes, because this is a pretty long fight. So my feelings about Resident Evil Zero. Uh, this is quite a controversial Resident Evil. A lot of people have critiqued it and criticised it. IGN gave it like a 6.5 or something. IGN were very critical of it, critical of the inventory, 
critical of the just the game design in general, saying that they thought that the enemies were uninspired and boring, and that the environments were uninspired and boring, and that the puzzles were uninspired and boring, and I can see parts of this argument, but at the same time, like, no. I, I disagree a lot with it, and I am going to review this game so you can hear my thoughts more concisely in that, but my gripes with the game would have to be just certain mechanical stuff. As far as what you do in the game, I think it's, it's a product of what it was. It was a dev cycle that had to have been cut short because the last half of this game is incredibly short compared to the first half. It's nowhere near as in-depth or, or as detailed. And I think the bosses, a lot of them seem like they were just kind of shoehorned in there because, you know, they ran out of time to design anything interesting. So here's a fucking bat that comes out of nowhere and here's this massive pile of green dog shit that's going to inspire every boss in Resident Evil 5 and 6 and fight it three times and control the Rebecca while she opens these events, you know? Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with the tank controls, because the tank controls were something that at the time when this game was popular, we all knew how to do them, you know? They were a standard that we could do. They were just like picking up health canteens instead of having regenerating life. Nobody looks back on health canteens and says, oh, that was a bag of shit design. They just go, it was what that design was at the time, because that's the way the game works. Nowadays, though, a lot of people shitting on the controls. Controls are shit, camera's shit, like... No, it's not shit, it's just different. <laughs> and that's what I don't think they can appreciate. And don't get me wrong, if you'd have seen me playing this on my first run, you'd have heard me be like, Fucking camera, I'm gonna kill you! And getting really mad and... You know, it controls like dog shit. I wanna kill myself, I wanna stab my jugular with the fucking D-pad because it's not moving her. And, and I would have said every one of those things. But if I would remove myself from that situation, I would be able to acknowledge that the controls are not bad, they're just different. They're a different standard and you're not used to them because you've been brought up on Call of Duty. You've been brought up on Assassin's Creed where you hold the analog forward and you get the fucking credits. Like, this is not that game. This is from a generation where that was not a thing yet. So it's very demanding and it's demanding in a very specific way. Like, you don't play the early racing games and then play the most recent racing game and say that that early game was a piece of shit because those early mechanics are what paved the way for those later ones, like... Bearing in mind, guys, Resident Evil 4 was one of the first games to innovate the over-the-shoulder camera and the closer camera on third-person action games. They were one of the first people to do it. They were one of the first people to popularise that way of perspective in that kind of game. And it redefined the entire genre of third-person shooters. And a lot of the ones to come were directly referenced from it. This game essentially took tank controls from like that silly tank game on the, the Atari <laughs> that, that I was never very good at. It took that mentality and it put it into this kind of game and it innovated this kind of game. And when this was popular, as I mentioned, it was how they controlled. It was the standard and there was a lot of games that came out that, that borrowed it. Like, look at your Silent Hills, look at your Clock Towers, look at your survival horror genre, look at things like Dino Crisis. I never played Fear Effect, but I think Fear Effect had tank controls as well. Like, there's a Vampire Hunter D game that was kind of survival horror -y. That had tank controls. And if you can get used to them, it's just as useful as any game. Like, look at God Hand. God Hand has tank controls. You might not realise it because it's a different type of game, but it does. There's a lot of games that have those kind of controls because they were one of the ways that games were made back then. And I've made the point earlier on in this walkthrough to say that I would love to see... You know how we have this obsession with 2, 2D stuff and 8-bit stuff and like NES, SNES era kind of visuals and gameplay? I'd love to see this era of gameplay get that kind of treatment. Because I think that we could make a fantastic game with fixed camera, even tank controls, maybe just fixed camera. And just this idea of incredibly detailed environments and environments that you have a lot of interaction with. Because I think the thing I miss the most with Resident Evil now, it's not necessarily the tank controls, it's not necessarily the um, the fixed camera or the, the tension of never having enough resources to actually kill stuff. Because that was the hard thing about these games. Like, I played Dino Crisis yesterday, I've not played it in a very long time. And I shot the first Raptor. When the second Raptor turned up, I didn't have any enough bullets to shoot it. You know, and that was on normal. Didn't even give me the ammo to kill the first few enemies because that's how the games were designed. 
and that's what made them strict. Nowadays, you know, you're a walking tank, and it's a very different experience. But I, I really think it's the puzzles, and it's the, you know, finding arbitrary thing from arbitrary thing to open arbitrary thing is the part that I miss the most about classic Resident Evil. I love assorting a bunch of random paintings by, you know, theme to theme to, to unlock a, a, a book that I open that's got a gem in it that I stick on top of like an arrowhead that I stab in the face of a scientist and then I put him on a conveyor belt into a furnace and he burns and inside of him there's there's a key to a to three arbitrary doors. I love that kind of shit because it's goofy but that's what they were like. It, they were the worst architects in the world. They made, they made the most eclectic buildings that nobody could navigate and if you didn't fill them full of zombies you'd have nothing to do because you couldn't find your bloody way. And that's what I would love to see. Because just think how good games have got since 2002. We have so much more power, so much more visual fidelity, so much more memory to add things. Like, just think how good pre-rendered backgrounds could look. And just think how interactive they could be with the new technology. And you're taking away all that power needed to generate those rooms by making it like this really efficient. You could go to town with effects and the stuff that you have done. Like You could have them opening drawers and being able to rummage through several items in drawers. And every single drawer could be openable. Cupboards could be openable. You could be able to move bottles from inside cabinets and find things behind them. There could be such a measure of detail and all of it could have a purpose. It could all be incredibly detailed. And if you look at a game such as this, the train was such a good level. The, the training facility was such a good level because it was that harking back to classic Resident Evil. When you think Resident Evil, what does it mean? Well, to me, it's that mansion. Regardless of what I like and which I prefer and which I think are better, it's that goddamn mansion every time because that's where the memories were first forged. And I think this game should have used the train for the full thing. I think the train should have been much longer. I think it should have had like animal carts, like transferring a portable zoo kind of thing that had gone fucking nuts. I think you should have gone on the side and underneath the train. And I think there should have been a whole host of different themes of every so many carts. And it could have worked really well. They could have even had the train stopping off at random spots where you got a little bit of diversity and a different scenario. And then you powered back on, got back on the train and carried on. I think that's what it should have been. Because I think the train is the best part of this game. But just the areas that they use, there's there's so much that could be done. You could involve platforming in it, you could involve so many aspects. You could involve a dodge button that Resident Evil 3 kind of used. You know, you could make it as, as detailed as you want to do. And once again, folks, if I ever make a video game, once I've done my uh, crazy open world RPG uh, character driven action game with incredible combat system, ranking system, and insane bosses and replayability. That was the end, by the way, guys. That was the last shot that killed it. Uh, the next thing I'll probably work on is fixed camera, survival horror game, like the classics, but one that you'll never blame the camera or you'll never blame the controls for, and one that you can feel like you can dodge every single thing in it and none of it's bullshit. That would be the, probably the second game I worked on. And you know it'd have shmup elements in it because all my games will have shmup elements in them. <laughs> but there's a puzzle here, folks. Uh, the orange card goes on the left, the silver card goes on the right, and then you have to press them both at the same time and it's going to open the final doorway. But you'll notice I have a bunch of grenade rounds left and a bunch of shotgun rounds left and a couple of magnum rounds left and that is everything I have coming into this next room. So this is your final save of the game. This is your healing items if you need them. There's a refill on your grenades, there's a refill on your shotgun. And what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to upload a video where I know damage the second phase of this fight because I'm not going to do it in this run. And my logic is this. There's no point in me showing you me straight up death squatting this boss like Sean Connery from the fucking Untouchables when I'm going to be carrying that ammo count into the next fight and it's an unrealistic amount of ammo to actually win. There's no point in that. But just to prove that I know damage the full game, I'm going to upload that as a separate video to show me absolutely murdering the boss. This one's going to have me me doing a lot of damage to the boss, but I think I take a, a few knockdowns during it. But this is it, guys. So my advice here, give her the shotgun, take the grenade launcher, take all the grenade ammunition, and save the acid rounds for the final phase if you can. Because the acid rounds seem to be the best tool for interrupting the boss's pathing and getting it to focus back on you. And it, 
this boss, if I could redesign it, I would remove the vignettes and the cutscenes. I would just make it, you know, tell me with a woman's voice or something that she's opened the, the, the blast door thing. And I would also make it so that when you get the boss's attention, the boss has to at least hit you before it will go back to Rebecca. As soon as you aggro it, it should have to meet a, a certain state before it can reset. And then what I would do is I would make it possible so that once you did aggro it in that middle center area, you could just keep rotating and just keep rotating and what will happen is the boss will follow you and if you keep ahead of her she'll spin indefinitely that's how I would made this boss work however it doesn't work that way because you're getting interrupted every fucking second and it's a mess but you'll notice I put first aid sprays on both characters once again this is a safety strat guys because I am really nervous at this point in my ability to beat this boss because it beat me up and I didn't have the bullets to, to beat it up back so it puts you at a bit of a deficit so I'm going to save for the final time. I'm going to control probably Billy for this sequence. Although it would have been smarter to control Rebecca because she is the weaker character. That's why I controlled her on that last fight if you're wondering. So immediately I open up with a bunch of explosive rounds into the boss's face. The boss will flinch but then it'll recover and then it takes a while to flinch it again. If it sits up on its back legs like it did just then, it's kind of like a, a taunting gesture that the boss does. Oh by the way, you see that? It's got this kind of Bulbasaur thing on its back that randomly spits out jizz. Acid jizz that is difficult to dodge and has way more range than it fucking should. And right there goes the uh, the no damage fail, because she just got hit by the boss. So I fire a couple more grenades into her side. That hit gave her immediately to caution, so you can't fuck about here, guys. And I pop the magnum on, and then it goes for her again. So that's the end of the boss fight. And then that's what we carried into the next phase. So not the cleanest of fights, but I've got decent ammo. And I know that Rebecca can do this because she's a boss. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give myself the shells. And I'm going to give her the grenade launcher potentially. Um, oh, I'm just going to take all the weapons. Yeah, it makes, all, makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Turn myself into a walking tank. And try and get the attention of this boss so that it doesn't kill Rebecca. So you always start here, and when you move forward, you can't move for some reason. It stops you every time. It's weird. But once you move, hit the boss with a couple of rounds, and do whatever you can to get her to look towards you. Another thing I hate about this fight is these walkways that lead you up. They couldn't just have been horizontal, could they, and give you a good advantage? No. Instead, they choose to be bullshitty, and they choose to go on like a weird right angle, and it puts you back next to the boss every time. So I don't know if you notice right now, but... This boss is really close to Rebecca, it doesn't care what I'm doing, and like a, a machine she somehow gets around it, which was really fortunate. So I'm going to try and keep it on this side of the room, and I just got her attention then. So now, hopefully, we can kite it a little bit. So yeah, I'm going to try and circle, show you the circle, but you see this? The boss is moving and I'm not moving, because it's bullshit. So just circle, and she's a fucking idiot. And you could do this indefinitely if it wasn't for those stupid vignettes. Like, look at this. This is like the ultimate tech. But it does this, and she gets to move. And look, and when this happens, she's still probably moving. So when it gives me control, I'm going to get hit. Oh no, I was lucky. And now the boss is going for Rebecca, so... That's how I would change this, by the way. Never have the boss reset unless it touches you. And I think... Yeah, it's getting distracted by Rebecca there, and I got hit with the tail whip, so another hit, unfortunately. But this is going okay. The first, uh, that first phase, not so much. This phase is going a lot better. There was a jump attack, and there's a lovely vignette. So, look, look, he's, he's, look at that bullshit. That is bullshit. She was jumping the other way, completely facing the wrong direction. It showed you that cutscene. It, when I got control of the game, she was already jumping at me. She'd recovered, she'd rotated in the time it took for the game to show me this unnecessary bullshit. <laughs> so if you're wondering, guys, why I didn't want to no damage it, it's for those moments. Because all it is is look this. And look at that. It hit me with its fucking miracle grenade jizz shot. And it's swinging its goddamn douchey tail. And this is a bit awkward because Rebecca's getting clipping on it. And you can't control Rebecca at this point. She's her own girl. But she's doing fantastically, so I can't... I can't say anything bad. She's doing really well. The only thing that's fucking us here is my inability to get this boss to come for me and those those cutscenes that allow the boss to get a better position on you, which is, is stupid. It should freeze the game. I'm sorry. There's there's no 
like logic you can give that's going to make me not think that that was bullshit because it is bullshit but when you see the roof go through it means you've done so there's the uh, the final cutscenes and now we're gonna see the ranking system so that boss is just miserable guys it really is but you can do it if I can do it you can do it and there you go 314 or 6 S rank because we're under 330 67 kills 509 shots no recovery items used 25 saves and the achievements are popping now allergic to first aid spray for not using first aid you'll also get another 25g if you don't mix any herbs which I'm recommending that you do this one is beat the treatment plant so just for finishing the game effectively the next one is from zero to hero, I think that's beating it on hard mode. So there's your hard trophy slash achievement. And then we have, is it serious business? Oh, here Queenie, feast on this. That's defeat the, the final boss. Once again, you've probably already done that if you've done a, a practice run. And there it is, this is serious business, 90G. That is a big one. No recovery items, including green chemicals. Because if you didn't know, you can use the green chemical that's in that one room in the mansion to heal. But that is the end of my walkthrough, guys. I hope you found it useful. I hope it's helping you get through the, the nightmare that is this campaign. And uh, I hope to see you on my, my next projects, which is pretty much any of the recent games coming out. I'm hopefully going to be covering them. Thank you very much once again, and you take care now.